Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to game 5 of day 5 of Dignitas week and well, let me just say, if you have mixed game 1, 2, 3 and 4, you should go and check them out because they were pretty fly and if you missed day 1, 2, 3 or 4 and all of the games of those, you should go check them out as well because they were also pretty awesome but let's leave that for now, you know what you've missed, it's all in a playlist so you can find it anyway let's talk about this game, we've got Orc who of course we're following on day 5 here in the top right playing as a Protoss player and yet again he's up against Vortex, now of course game 3 I believe it was, we saw him play against Vortex and well he did pretty damn good and yeah Unfortunately, didn't quite win, but that's fine. We'll see how he does in this game. Going for a forge, well, a fast expansion is probably going to be a forge, maybe a nexus first. We'll wait and see. Meanwhile, obviously, nothing else really going to be going on. Vortex should be getting down the spawning pool, followed by a hatch, followed by a third hatchery is the normal timing. Now, for those of you who've just tuned in and you're a bit like, hey, what's this Dignitas thing week? Maddles, why have you got the Team Dignitas logo down there? Well, basically, this week I am following Team Dignitas, one of their players, each day, every day, in order to get to know their playstyles. I've also done an interview with them just so hell you get to know what their personality is like and I've stuck it all in a great big thread on Team Liquid and also basically said a lot about it on Twitter etc. So let me know what you think. Make sure you tweet me and leave a message in that thread about what you think etc. And unfortunately this is the final day. Um, the other two players for Dignitas unfortunately weren't able to do this just due to their insanely hectic schedule of tournaments etc. So that's a bit of a shame, but I'm hoping to do this with some more teams as well. So if there's any particular team you'd like me to do this with, then do send me a tweet and let me know. Now, we're going to see a Nexus first out of Orc, because he does have enough money for it at the moment. Meanwhile, this probe is going to try and be irritating and basically block all these off. Now, the reason Orc is just so, so good at playing StarCraft, really in my opinion, is because he can play all three races really, really well. As he says in his interview, he plays all of the three races as a top GM player, so he knows all the timings, everything that's annoying to everything for every race, everything that's strong in every race, and is generally just pretty damn good at this game and knows everything about it. So, as a result, he can just be very, very irritating. And he's even saying here, I, I see you sending a Zergling to my base, but I don't know where he sees that Zergling, because... Let's have a look. I see you sending your Ling to my base. The Lings have only just popped as far as I'm aware. I'm really confused right now how he saw that, but yeah. He, but Orc just checking it was a 15 pool, but that of course was the case. Now looking here, we've got obviously the Forge, the Gateway down, it's all looking good. There goes down the cannon. Everything to be expected. Obviously the Nexus first means Orc's going to be in a great economical position. It'll be interesting to see what kind of build he does, because generally speaking on Cloud Kingdom, this third base is extremely vulnerable for the Zerg player. For a start, you've got massive area here that units can come in. You've got big area here that units can come in. But most importantly, this area here, is quite narrow. That makes force fields incredibly potent and therefore the Sentry Immortal all in very, very strong. Also though, the third base isn't too tough for Protoss to take because they can wall off across here, which can be really, really strong and prevent most pushes coming in. So I'll be interested to see what Orc does. Of course, Dream likes going for that quick third base and I believe Bling is partial to it as well sometimes. So obviously they're the two big Protoss players on Orc's new team. So I can't wait to see how it all goes down. Orc has taken his two gas up in the main base. No gas yet, of course, for Vortex, purely because there's no need for it. He doesn't really get that until about 40 to 50 odd supply when you're playing against the fast expanding Protoss. Now, obviously looking here, what else have we got? We've got the Cybercore on its way down. This wall of still doesn't have a Zealot in there, and I believe the Zealot was actually skipped by Orc. So, really going as economically focused as he possibly can. And I'll be really interested to see if it works out for him or not. Obviously... The fact he skipped that Zealot is going to be fine because, well, this Zergling can't get in past the cannon. There's not a big flood of Zerglings on the field with only four on there. So no real threat of being engaged or much damage being done. Noticing that, obviously, the third and fourth gas haven't been started yet. The first two gas should be starting really any minute now for Vortex. He's just getting some more drones up to 42 supply now. So really any point now, it's pretty normal to see it come down. The stock on its way, a robotic facility is going to go down. I don't know why Orc didn't want to place it there. Just wanted to move it over a little bit. He's got his very specific point. Moving it over one space further means that if this Overlord were to come in, it may be able to get sniped out slightly quicker. So far, Gateway Tech on its way. The third and fourth gas on its way. Meanwhile, we have the first one, two, three gas out for Vortex. Three gas, obviously going to allow him to get quite a few roaches out should he want to. Tech okay-ish. Won't be able to get double upgrades though, um, unless of course he skipped roaches completely. So that is really just what we're looking at here. Meanwhile, looking down for Orc, obviously his Warp Gate Tech about a quarter done. His Chrono Boost though, 
They are... I'm not quite sure what they're being spent on. He's got two banked up, but for the moment he's not spending them on anything, so can't wait to see what they're going to be used for. This stalker poking and prodding around. We've got the Roach Warren. Where is it? There we go. The Roach Warren on its way down there for... Vortex, of course. One thing I'm really missing is I've been observing some games in Heart of the Swarm as well as playing loads of Heart of the Swarm. And the biggest and best feature of it as a caster is you can actually click on things in production and it will send to the camera on where that is. It is so, so good. And there's just lots of real basic caster things added in Heart of the Swarm, which when you switch back to Wings of Liberty, you suddenly wonder how you ever lived without them. Now, Back to this game though, enough about the expansion, obviously we are going to see this single overlord probably get taken out, it's going to be pretty close though, it should go down though, there we go, so that is good supply blocks of Vortex, that's going to be annoying, he does have two more on the way though, the Immortal on its way out, three more gateways being added on, and what is Vortex really doing to prepare for this, he's getting his lair up, and that's pretty much it, he's like, well, I'll get my lair, He's still only got two Zerglings on the field, <coughs> but Orc is taking his third base and therefore is not going to be going for an all-in. I don't know if this... Yeah, but it has been scouted, so that is a really important thing. The Vortex has now seen this third base and knows that, hey, I'm safe. I'm not going to get an Immortal Sentry all-in, which is good news for him. The Twilight Council on its way down as well, so really Orc... He took a build very similar to what Dream likes to do, and um, I believe the first person to go for this sort of fake Immortal Sentry all-in build was actually Hero. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I am fairly sure that was the case. If I'm sure someone in the comment section will correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Meanwhile, whole string of Zerglings on their way over, and well, this third base could suddenly be going into a lot of problems, or maybe even the natural. It looks like Vortex is going to go straight in there. We do, of course, see the plus one finish, the plus two starts straight away after. That Immortal, is it going to get surrounded? Yes, well, that is a massive loss right now for Orc, losing that Immortal. He needed that so desperately, but that is a good little takedown. Meanwhile, we've got a warping of Zealots there. The rest of these Zerglings are just going to try and kill a couple of probes. We'll get cleaned up there. The Zerglings in the main base have got cleaned up. Good force fields. How many units were killed? Wow, no workers were actually killed there. I'm really shocked by that. In terms of the Lost Tab, well, these Zerglings are still trying to run around, still trying to poke and prod at something. Are they finally going to get a probe kill? Yeah, one goes down. Are we going to see any more? I don't think we will. There's only three Zerglings left, and they're very, very low on health, so that is fine. Vortex taking another expansion. In terms of the work count, 59 to 72, so Vortex exactly where he needs to be. He has got huge numbers of workers. He's getting a huge number of roaches up. A 1-1 one, one melee upgrade, road speed, pathogen glands. Meanwhile, Twilight Council on its way down. Uh, the Arch uh, Templar Archives, rather, on its way down for Orc. So he is going to be really getting on those high Templar tech. Maybe some Archons. He's got a good number of sentries. Of course, losing that Immortal was a big, big loss for him. And really, in that kind of situation, you've got to be thinking, hey, how do I come back from that? Meanwhile, the Hatchery is down. It is on its way through. It is... Well, fourth base, it's a base up where you want to be as a Zerg player. But with good numbers of drones out, to be honest, Vortex, he's going to be able to start pushing fairly hard. He could do with a few more drones. He's down at 70, but he's going for some aggression. He's going to try and kill off this base. And to be honest, looking at what there is to defend for Orc, he may be very, very successful with that. Warping in some more High Templar. Storm is on its way down. But this push, if it comes across now, is going to hit way, way before Storm is done. And, well, obviously with the 1-1 melee upgrades nearly done. Pathogen glands nearly done as well. The only thing missing from this force at the moment is the infestors which are on their way out the war prism is going to scout it though and orc does have a lot of force fields potentially available so two force fields go down straight away the interesting thing i'm noticing from orc is he's not chucking down the gateway wall off you ever so often see so it will be interesting to see whether he does do that at a later point in the game meanwhile we do of course have hive on its way down we have a spire as well somewhere where are you spire look i know you're being built spire there we are. Spires are the hardest things to spot buildings, in my opinion. I cannot ever seem to spot a spire on its way. Looking here, though, what else have we got? Well, we've got more Immortals down. We've got just more High Templar on the way out. So the High Templar count actually getting pretty damn high. Five there, one morphing into an Archon. Here comes this Gateway Wall off, which we usually see, as well as a lot more Pylons. Meanwhile, the fourth base up and running, happily for Vortex, who's starting building that Spine Crawler wall. Got Spine Crawlers up at the Natural as well. This is sort of the Broodlord Infestor composition, where you get the Spine Crawlers just for the added defense. Should a counter push come in, it just means you've got a lot there to defend and slow it down. This War Prism hasn't been too successful. In terms of worker killed, only one worker has been killed this game, and that was actually by Vortex when he obviously went for that big Ling push. So. In terms of lost units and lost resources, really low, under a thousand each. And of course, we're at the kind of 13 and a half minute mark where usually you can see quite a bit there. Now, we do still have those four High Templar, two Archons, a lot of sentries, and the two Immortals there. The War Prism is going to allow some warp ins as well. But this push could potentially be quite dangerous. Lots of units out, though, for Vortex with a big supply lead. So I think he should be able to hold this absolutely fine. 
We'll wait and see though, moving across, more warpins on their way. Storm is available, and of course Storm, a lot of DPS, a lot of damage done very, very quickly. But it's really what support units can help. The Archons are going to help massively. It's all going to come down to what these fungal growths are like. Some great feedbacks though. Knock out some of those infestors very, very quickly. The storms go down exceptionally quick, but we should see some infested turns. There we go. They are on their way down. Are we going to see a storm? It's of course, they've only got 70 health now when hatching, so they can be taken down. But Ulk does not have any energy left. Starts moving back, drops down the force fields, ASAP. And well, he's just trying to deal with these infested turns as quickly as he can. He nearly loses a sentry there, though, with 5 HP. That is one lucky sentry. But well, the push still continues. Vortex with a massive supply lead, though. Even with this warping of additional zealots, I think Vortex should be very very comfortably able to defend this and of course he's got his greatest spire coming up behind this orc gonna have to go into full retreat mode right now he's got more sentries coming out more zealots coming out but well as we can see here we've got a good number of units down we've lost very little four workers were killed there could see some storms from the top ground we could also see just those stalkers trying to pick it off engaging away from the spine crawlers meanwhile broodlords are morphing on of course once you start seeing those broodlords you're gonna have to start panicking because well the stargate is on its way that's of course teching up to the mothership in order Order to get down the vortex from and really just get an arc on toilet it's really the only way to deal with the zerg real real late game meanwhile though fifth base is of course up for vortex orc getting his fourth up and running as well hasn't transferred any probes over there we see vortex also getting some more drones going up quite high in drones 83 he'll probably start some more spine crawlers as well i have no doubt of that so all in all these two players, they are, well, going to retreat back and try and be as defensive as possible because Orc doesn't have the units he needs to really push to a Broodlord Investor Force. And Vortex hasn't really maxed out yet. As soon as he maxes out, I expect him to start moving over. In terms of upgrades, of course, we do have the plus two. Two upgrades done, I believe. Just trying to find those evolution chambers. There we go. So, 2-2 two, two is done. 3-3 three, three not started. We've got some Spine Crawlers up here defending the Great Aspire. That's a good move there. Obviously, some for the Hive as well. But well, here come some Zerglings on their way through. A Zergling run by trying to go up to the third, realizes, hey, there's cannons there, not going to have too much fun. Those Zerglings are going to get taken out, and there's not enough to push through up there either with the two cannons. So Orc has done a good job in order defending and putting down the static defense to prevent little attacks like that. But his big problem is going to come with all these Broodlords. Now we do have a Zealot warping into the main base. Does manage to pick off the spawning pool, which is actually quite a good little win. Will he manage to get this infestation pit as well? It looks like no, he won't. Unfortunately, he's hitting quite a few drones there instead. I still only killed a really, really low number though. And actually the drone and probe count, 68 to 79. So both players really maxed out on the workers that they'll want. The fleet beacon is nearly finished up. That'll of course allow the mothership to start teching towards obviously the vortex vortex that you need. I said vortex there. I knew I was going to slip up with that at some point guys. So I do apologise but well, obviously we're going to need some good vortex if it's going to work because looking here orc he's still 10 supply behind in terms of upgrades i'm not quite sure how he's doing let's find a forge and have a look well he's getting up the plus one protoss ground armor he has the plus three weapons done already so he's a bit behind in terms of the upgrades the three three upgrades just starting now but these broodlords are a little exposed and so are the infestors as well some feedbacks go down very very quickly a good blink under without any support these broodlords are going to get taken down exceptionally quickly this is exactly what orc needs it's <coughs> and we've got, of course, the roaches on their way over. Some good storms start hitting, though. Enough broodlords may have survived, though. More are getting taken down, though, by these stalkers. They need to focus fire ASAP in order to pick off these broodlords. Because once they're down, this is huge amounts of losses for Vortex, who's maxing out on Ling Roach to really try and come back from this. But this push from Orc time perfectly. And Vortex, with a big slip-up, leaving those broodlords completely exposed. More Archons, more... Um, Infestors rather getting taken down with Storm and all of the Broodlords I believe have now been cleaned up. That was such a good engagement for Orc as you can see there. He is, well he's still actually trading more effectively than his opponent which is precisely what we want. That Archon apparently does not want to be saved right now. This fifth base at the bottom had a warping, gets taken out through all that action and well what can I say. Orc has really pushed himself back into this game by knocking out those Broodlords because ultimately Roach Ling isn't going to be strong enough at this stage of the game to push through especially when we've got Orc with a plus one armor down now we've got some Zerglings coming and running around they're probably going to try and target this third base I would expect I don't know if the Stalkers did catch it there it seems like they didn't because they're not pulling back but well two cannons are down they should be able to do a good bit of damage the Zerglings look like they're going to come straight through and split apart the Vortex the Mothership rather has started picking off some of Vortex's Lings right now but what's this a push coming into the fourth base and I'm not sure what Orc's army is doing up the top there but this fourth base is going to get decimated and it 
instantly. And of course, coming back from that is going to be pretty tough. A good cloak, though, obviously means that a lot of those units will survive. And Orc actually managing to trap huge amounts of Vortex's army, getting some great storms down, doing absolutely huge amounts of damage. A great forward blink as well, and Orc now taking the supply lead. And there is the GG from Vortex. So Orc... He came back with a grudge match there, wanting to make sure that he wins it after losing to Vortex earlier. And does so with a great comeback. It all came from when he picked off those Broodlords though. Anyway, this was the penultimate game. I've got one more from Orc. And, well, you better make sure you check it out. You better make sure you look at his interview. And by all means, make sure you leave a comment on the big thread about this. All linked below. I'll see you at Game 6 any second. Bye for now.